So, Prevenge, this is written, directed, and starring Alice Lowe, her of Sightseer's fame and Gotham Rings Dark Place and just any good comedy of the last 15 years. She is awesome. And the film was made when she was actually seven months pregnant with her own child, which she has subsequently had, and there's like one now. So, unique filming conditions. And in it, Alice Lowe plays Ruth, whose partner died in a climbing accident when he was cut loose by the rest of his group. And while heavily pregnant, she goes on a killing spree of all the people she thinks is responsible and her unborn child is ordering her to do this in a sort of demonic golem-esque voice and here is a clip of her talking to her unborn child after she just killed one of the people on her checklist and also his flatmate it was completely unnecessary to kill that man he was really nice he was a sop a hipster sop <laughs> Sacrifices I've had to make. What sacrifices? Children these days are really spoiled. Like, Mummy, I want a PlayStation. Mummy, I want you to kill that man. I don't want a new... I know you don't want a new daddy, but there was no possibility of that, so stop going on about it. He saw everything. I know he's a witness, but there's a chance he might not have told anyone. His name was Josh. No, you're right. No one called Josh is not going to tell the authorities. So we both saw this at the London Film Festival. Yeah, I was super hungover, which didn't help, but, <laughs> but I still enjoyed it. <laughs> I thought it was really good. I really liked it. And I was impressed by how it really made the most of its premise because it's a slightly kind of cool, wacky premise. And sometimes you wonder if these things are just better left as like posters or Twitter jokes. It's like the sort of grindhouse trailers, the good as trailers, but no one, nobody wants to see Machete the movie. Yeah. Hence why it made no money. Yeah. <laughs> But it really dealt with the concept of pregnancy in an interesting way. And I heard Alice Lowe talk about one of the impetus was like the cinematic portrayal of motherhood is always this like a spiritual transcendent. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like self-realization. Yeah, like exactly. Your, you know, and the miracle of birth. And challenge stuff. that perception because, you know, in reality, it's a horrific and scary process. Yeah. And I think the film kind of captures that quite brilliantly. Yeah, I, I thought that, like, the thing that elevates it above those kind of, like, comedy pitches, like werewolf, Nazis of the SS, or whatever, is that it's so clearly, like, it's a very personal film, and it's a combination of all her interests, like, partly the sort of awkward British comedy of manners stuff, where she's dealing with the um, uh, woman in the maternity uh, yeah. ward or whatever, like, who's incredibly patronizing and irritating, and all of the people who she encounters on her killing spree are, like, funny British comic characters, and also, she obviously wanted to make this kind of pulsating um, serial killer film. Yeah. And it's got that aspect. And she also wanted to make a film about her own pregnancy. And all of that works together very well. It's a sort of classic, like, sort of horror thing, right? Where it's like, you know, you just take one aspect of the human experience, but it's like a horror movie version of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And pregnancy is so ripe for doing that with. But it's usually done... Uh, like from the perspective of like the sort of de demonic child thing. Yeah, the sort of uh, evil version of the Immaculate Conception. Like, yeah, exactly. With, where with like the devil instead of Jesus. Yeah, where it's more about like the nature of the baby, but it's rarely done from that perspective of like the psychological effect on the mother of childbirth or how like I think it's it's both the the like um, the sort of like physical aspect to it, but also that it's like disorienting and. Yeah, you know, just like weird. I I imagine. Yeah, I'm <laughs> um, pretty sure it's weird. Pretty sure it's weird. I think I'm safe in in using that term. Um, <laughs> Everyday patriarchy. Some <laughs> of you call it weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, and so it just like yeah. I mean, you don't have to have been pregnant yourself to like you know grasp that it's obviously a film that's clearly about her own experiences of being pregnant, like her her working through it, and that kind of way. That's both like funny and you know horrifying. Yeah, and I also think the premise lends itself to this very neat and tight structure in that every 15 minutes or so, somebody will be murdered. It's much like Kill Bill, really. Yeah, and there's something pleasing about just, like, it's a new sort of, like, slightly familiar comedy character sort of turns up and will be dispatched in some inventive way. Yeah, and it's and, like, what will the twist on it be this time, yeah. you know? Yeah, and also the fact that she's pregnant has got this kind of ticking uh, clock kind of, like, device. Like, at some point, she's going to give birth. Yeah, yeah, And it yeah. just adds a little tension to everything. Um, it was shot in two weeks and on a very low budget, and I think mean, you can tell. And given 
it's low budget and how quickly it was made. I think it's really impressive. And as you were saying about the sort of weird disorienting experience of being pregnant, I think there's a lot of like neat editing and sound design, which kind of reflects that. I think where the budget does creak is that it's quite visually flat just because I don't think they had time to set up lights. So it's very kind of like shot on the hoof. But the kind of scrappiness of it almost is of a piece. You know, it's all one idea executed like to the best of its ability. It's almost, I don't know if think it'd be a better movie if they had uh, more money in a way. No, yeah. I mean, in, in what, and it also has that um, kind of meta aspect to the story in that the film is about a uh, woman who's heavily pregnant um, embarking on this wild project. And that is also sort of what Alice Lowe did in yeah. making this film while heavily pregnant. You know, like filmmaking is a very draining and all-consuming process and she isn't just doing one part of it, but she also wrote, you know, directed and starred in it. So it's, I feel like at least knowing that background to it, I was quite aware watching it. Yeah. It's like, this must have been a tiring <laughs> like well, thing. You know, I, It's one of those movies where like sort of unique conditions of the shooting of it just adds something to it. It's like, she was really pregnant and like, I don't know, it's, I'm trying to think of movies compared to like Victoria or Boyhood or whatever. It's like just a unique filming condition just adds a, yeah, yeah. Thing to it, which do, like if it was just an actress in a fat suit, it wouldn't. Be yeah, the same no, in definitely. Way. Well, do you think that there's um, this might like just sound lame, but do you think there's an aspect to it where she's sort of reacting against the uh, like everyone wants to make sure that like pregnant women are like sitting down and drinking herbal tea and like don't yeah. move too quickly, you know? Exactly. And, like have to be like pampered and taken great care of, and she's like, "Fuck you! I've made like a serial killer movie." Now, if I see a uh, pregnant woman sitting down, I'm like, "Why the fuck are you making a movie? <laughs> get up! Get up! You lazy, <laughs> knocked up woman!" <laughs> and be like, "Get on! Go make a film! Go make a film!" Like Anna's low, my hero. Yeah. Well, if if there's ever a woman who wants to sit down in the chair, I'm like, "Sure, you can sit down, but there better be a film coming out of this. <laughs> you better be on your way to make art." God's sake. God's sake. So the big takeaway from this movie is that pregnant women are quite lazy. Apart from Anna Slow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm I <laughs> that was the message of the film, wasn't it? I want to hear from this kid in ten years' time. It's like as soon as that child's old enough to watch this movie. I feel like that'd be the most awesome thing. When they're ten. Well, he won't be old enough when he's ten. When he's but it's, it's ma- maybe she. It's, a she. Off... it's a daughter. Oh, it's a daughter, right. Yeah. But uh yeah, I just think it would there'd be something awesome about like if I found out that my mum had made this like serial killer <laughs> film while heavily pregnant with me, it'd just be amazing. Yeah, it would be awesome. It's kind of a cool gift for that child when they yeah. turn sixteen or something. I hope she makes another film about like, you know, a serial killer with a one year old and that's her so thing. On, it's so just so the whole char- like chartering her entire um like maternal experience. Yeah, like seven up, but instead of filming kids. A series growing... of serial killer films. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like the Halloween series or something, but yeah, yeah, with that more personal aspect. And then her daughter will take over the franchise at one point and be the lead. Can't wait. My favorite film stars Bridget Bardo. She's the queen, but she wants to be in radio, so she starts a podcast with her friends. And the terrorists try to stop her, but she beats them in the end.